<laughs> well, we unanticipated how deep the snow was here. All right, and it's uh, we went all the way from highway. That's probably I would say quarter of a mile at the street street pressure, and I was tracking. But now we're stuck, and it's amazing what lowering tire pressure does. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go to 20 and see what difference this makes. All right, we'll try with the PSI at 20. See what kind of difference that makes. Well, it looks like we found a decent spot to camp, but we gotta try to avoid this big washout here. I guess we'll see how it goes. Keep it this way or mm -hmm. right. Keep it close to the tree. Oh, you were walking over there and it was pretty deep. Maybe I should put this tire on. Well, I don't want you to fall in there. Once you get next to the tree, then you can turn up. Maybe, hopefully your back won't slide in. Perfect. Snow here is a lot like in Wyoming. Hard crust on the outside and soupy on the inside. It's uh, almost 8 o'clock in the morning and we are sitting in the truck. Actually, we just started it, but man, it got cold overnight. And we were not prepared because it was really mild before uh, we went to sleep. We're not really prepared uh, that it's going to get this cold. Uh, it was... Uh, probably 33, 34 degrees when we went to sleep. And this morning, well, we don't have a thermometer I have on my watch and it was showing 10 degrees. It's probably even colder than that. I bet when the sun comes out, it will be nice and toasty out here. But at night, uh, by morning, my feet were getting cold in a, in a sleeping bag and Mitch, fared even worse he's all shivering so tonight we'll get a little bit better prepared uh, knowing that it, it gets cold out here I think part of it is uh, we're kind of in the hole so uh, all the cold air kind of rolls downhill and uh, but I don't think it would be worth relocating the camp or anything rich you work pretty cold. Well, I guess we'll see. So a couple of more issues with this cold that rolled in. Our compressor finally is actually pumping. Uh, the air got cold and uh, it turned on in the middle of the night. Good thing I was actually awake at the time. And it was pumping and I'm like, it's not shutting off, what the heck? So I shut it off manually because once it gets to 150 uh, PSI, it shuts, out, it shuts off automatically. But it wouldn't shut off. But the second problem we have encountered with the vehicle, well, first one was we developed uh, exhaust leak. But second, 
the exhaust pipe, all the mud got built up under the bumper and it was channeling the air through here. So besides um, melting the wrap, it's actually started melting the light. Uh, so it had to be cleared out and we'll see if we'll cut the pipe in the angle so it would be um, would not repeat the same kind of problem and wouldn't wouldn't melt the slides at this point it, it works it's just cosmetic damage but that's just how it goes down that we have to address nothing wrong with uh, the truck itself but it looks like we developed a leak in, um, in one of the, our, our helper springs that we have installed so the the truck is squatting pretty uh, nicely in the back so we're going to <coughs> we're going to take a look at it and see we have an extra bag if we need to replace it and um, not sure if it's a hose um, it might have been pinched and ripped it just like last time around uh, on the bank that we were traversing yesterday getting to the campsite it was flexing pretty good so that could have been what it caught in the spring and got a tear I guess we'll find out shortly to have a full set of tools with you yeah, fair enough. a lot of weight but it's worth it when you need it so what do you think it's a hose yeah that should be easy fix then that hose is kind of plasticky and uh, in the uh, at low temperatures becomes really brill. Well, I'm glad that we don't even have to replace the, the airbag because if we have to unload half of the truck to get to the airbag, it's somewhere no, in the truck. I, I left it accessible. Did you? It's right at that door. Gosh, Mitch, you are so smart. It's incredible. Just like your father. Don't. <laughs> why are you smiling? <laughs> well, I think it should be a. Uh, short work so today the plan is to get uh, off-road and see some of the country out here in Utah probably uh, Wyoming has plenty of trails not as scenic uh, but plenty of uh, trails on BLM land and so forth so today we're going to get off-road see how muddy it is how difficult it will be uh, to get around with our heavy rig and uh, have a little fun so that's uh, for the next couple of days that's what we're planning to do and then on Friday we're gonna go and see uh, my good friend Mike and Bert all right so Mitch has uh, cut the piece of hose that uh, that was um, possibly cause causing trouble so we're gonna air it up and see if that would be the solution. I'm 
so the truck is squatting in the back pretty good in a second he's going to pump it we, we are uh, they are rated to 35 psi we're about uh, airing it up to about 35 and here it's going up how much uh, go to 35 If it's a little bit more, leave it because uh, here, while we're putting everything away, we're gonna see we're gonna see if there is a leak. So we have two drawers that I uh, have built a while back, uh, basically out of uh, pine with uh, oak uh, slides and plywood on top. It's been holding up pretty well last probably four years, maybe even five. Uh, but it's uh, really useful. We're taking a lot of instruments with us, but it's uh, it is useful. Uh, we haven't had to use it extensively, but it's a simple philosophy. It's better to have it uh, and not need it, and so so it goes. Then then needing it and not having it. And, so far, uh, like I said, it's an extra weight, um, quite a bit of weight too. But in our minds, it's uh, it's a extra insurance, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere. Do you want to measure it, see if it's holding up? As a mood, seems like we're in business. All right, well, we are on the road again. <laughs>